So let's welcome our next speaker, Patrick. He is a <laughs> he's a PhD student at uh, uh, TU Delft, and That's his right. specialization is intersection between AI and economics. He is going to tell us about the trillion dollar business using Julia. Thank you. And sorry to interrupt the the session. <laughs> All right, um, yeah, great to be here. Um, thanks again. Uh, so this is a very small package, actually, uh, that really um, primarily just gives access to a data set that I have not compiled. Uh, so that's the, the, the big disclaimer here. Uh, this is a, a paper I came across that was published last year at, I think it was uh, NACL uh, or ACL, one of the big um, uh, NLP conferences. Uh, and what these authors did is they essentially collected uh, communications from the Federal Reserve in the US, uh, so press conferences, uh, speeches, uh, and meeting minutes, and they built a, they, they went ahead and annotated these communications on, on a sentence by sentence basis and classified sentences as, as either hawkish, dovish, or neutral, which is central bank speech for uh, do you want to uh, typically raise interest rates, lower interest rates, or don't do anything. Um, so Jul this, this package just provides uh, straightforward access to this, to this data set. Uh, we cleaned the data a little bit, uh, and it also does a little bit more, and I'll, I'll go on to explain that. Uh, so the context of this is uh, that we have a paper coming up uh, in two weeks at ICML, uh, where we argue that uh, AI researchers should stop making unscientific, uh, unscientific AGI uh, performance claims. Uh, this paper was triggered by a chart that I saw flying around on Twitter last year that showed how uh, Llama 2 embeddings can be used to predict uh, geographical locations of, of tokens. So if you feed the word London uh, into, into Llama and you look at the uh, resulting embeddings, then those can be used to predict the geographical coordinates of, of London. Um, and we argue that this is not surprising at all because we know that mod models um, can distill meaningful information that predicts external data, and we have a bunch of examples uh, in our paper. And one of the examples is, is using this data set that we provide access to here. Um, so what does the package actually do? It, it provides very uh, basic functionality for, for loading the pre-processed data, uh, loading the model that is uh, proposed in the paper, all in Julia. Um, it also provides, and this is a little bit bit of extra, it provides uh, basic uh, tools for, for model inference. Uh, essentially for the paper, for the experiments in our paper, we had to go ahead and compute uh, model activations for all the uh, sentences in the data set. So for each sentence, we, we essentially feed the sentence through the model and we store the layer by layer last layer, uh, last token activations. And those activations in the package are made available through, through artifacts. Um, they're interesting because from, a, from an interpretability angle, we can, we can look at these embeddings and at, at these uh, activations and see if there's any interesting properties. So here's a little bit on the code. The functionality, the API is very uh, straightforward, so you can use um, this simple function load all sentences to just load the actual uh, sentence data um, with a bit of metadata uh, on top of that. And then uh, what the authors of the Trillion Dollar Words paper also do is they link this data and later the embeddings um, to various external data sets of interest. So here we have some macroeconomic uh, indicators including uh, inflation-related measures and interest rate related measures. And the, the authors do actually provide all this data in, in a GitHub repo. Um, of course, it's all Python based. It's also a little bit unorganized, uh, no shame here, but uh, we, we did a bit of uh, cleaning and uh, the Julia version is now very, very uh, organized, I think. Um, so to load the model, we rely on, on transformers.jl. I've seen uh, Peter uh, run around here, um, so heads off to him here for this package. Uh, so that's loaded from, from Hugging Face, <coughs> and we have a simple call here where all the keyword arguments that you would use with transformers.jl uh, are still applicable. So you could, for example, load the model, 
uh, and ensure that the hidden state activations are still uh, re returned um, once you call the model. Uh, and here we go. This is actually what we also do in the paper. So basic model inference. Uh, you can use the sentences, then feed them, uh, load the model, and then feed the uh, sentences to, the, to this layer-wise activation function to get uh, not the final output, not the final classification output, but to get the, the embeddings. So in case you're interested in mechanistic in interpretability, um, this is useful. Uh, you don't have to do this from scratch anymore, at least for this data set, because we've already, as I mentioned earlier, saved all these activations for you as artifacts. So now you can just use this uh, simple a API call here, the using the artifact string to get layers, uh, activations for different layers. Now back to the story that I started with. So um, this chart that I saw flying around on Twitter it was a very interesting visualization. So they, they showed, yeah, okay, um, these embeddings in LAMA2 are predictive of geographical locations. But then the conclusions, um, at least in the first version of the paper, they all hinted at, oh, we found uh, evidence of, of AGI. This model needs to be, is clearly sentient because there's a physical world map uh, embedded in it. Um, and we, well, we're, we're skeptical. Um, and to show this, as I said, we ran experiments with this much simpler model, to be fair. Um, but here we have two sentences. Uh, one is clearly about inflation. The other one, so it is actually related to, to economics. The other one looks similar, but it is really about the deflation in the number of uh, doves, I think. We have doves and hawks here. Um, but yeah, essentially we made up sentences. Uh, this is clearly unrelated to economics. and. You don't have to be an expert in economics to understand that this has no impact on, on inflation or any other uh, economic uh, measure if a central banker uses this communication. Um, but when we actually go ahead and we apply the methodology that they use in the paper and we run uh, linear probes on the embeddings, we tend to find that the, the predictions of that linear probe um, they're the same. So that to us is like one very simple way to show that even though you might have uh, predictive embeddings, so the embeddings might, uh, be, able, might, might be able to, to predict, thank you, um, external variables that does not necessarily point to actual economic understanding. And we run these probes for all the models and we show, yeah, we, we find uh, predictive performance and that predictive performance is actually uh, better than, than for baseline models. Uh, but if we feed the model junk, then we get the same. So we run essentially this, this small motivational example that I showed you. We run that multiple times. Uh, and we, yeah, as one of our experiments, uh, show that uh, clearly this cannot be seen as evidence for, for AGI. So the goals for this package, and with this I'll finish up, is, well, it provides a very basic uh, functionality and access to this, what I think is an interesting data set. Uh, there's scope for in, uh, increasing the scope of this package by adding more data sets. Um, so any types of, of contributions, uh, but also just simply using the package is, is very, very welcome. And with that, I'll open up to questions. So I'm curious about like when you're doing this, um, <laughs> did anything stand out to you as like kind of like a better or more interesting extension? Because like people have been trying to do this for like like decades now, where they look look at central banker things and they're like, oh, inflation is going to go up or go down, and then like buy bonds or whatever. Um, so I'm curious if anything, anything stood out to you where you're like, yeah, we can make this better, or more interesting. Um, I mean, there there are a lot of interesting approaches in the field of uh, mechanistic interpretability of, of LNMs. Uh, so this paper, we're, we're not trying to, to bash those. I think there's a lot of value here. Uh, you, I know you're familiar with Anthropic. Um, they actually came out recently with, with an interesting paper uh, that yeah, does, I guess, a more sophisticated, has a more sophisticated take on mechanistic interpretability. They use a, a dictionary-based approach, um, not simply linear probes. And they're also quite careful to not draw any uh, crazy AGI conclusions in general. Um, in terms of you know, actually using LNMs in this context of, of central banks, 
Um, we did present this work uh, earlier this year in, in London at a, a conference organized by central banks and, and uh, King's College London. And what I see is that a lot of central banks, especially the Fed, are very actively investing in this, in this, work, in this type of work. So they, the, the Fed is working on, on their own sort of BERT-based uh, large language model uh, to quantify their own communications, um, which is... <laughs> <laughs> which is yeah, uh, interesting. You're like Jerome Powell, you're you're talking too much. Slow down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, so I can I can see many use cases. I can see central banks using this to sort of yeah navigate na as you say navigate their their uh, communications. Um, but yeah, the common common challenges. Uh, to what extent can you then actually you know trust that that your large language classifier, your hawkishness indicator. Um, mm is actually accurate, is actually trustworthy. Uh, lots of work to do then in, in, in the explainability space, I think. But to answer your question briefly, lots of people are interested in working on it, yeah. All right, thank you. Any other question? All right, then let's conclude this session.